This video is sponsored by the JVOS Mindset. It's a new way of thinking of jujitsu. Click the link in the description and get your copy today. Hello everyone and welcome to the Master Plan Lecture Series. My name is Javier Vasquez. So in today's video, the first thing I want to discuss is my journey into learning jujitsu. So I learned jujitsu. I started training back in 1997. Jiu-Jitsu had just started to blow up in the United States and there were actually very few schools that were teaching Jiu-Jitsu at that time. I decided to settle on the Carlson Gracie team and Professor Rodrigo Medeiros, which at the time had a school in Whittier, California. And uh, at the time, there was no real Jiu-Jitsu curriculum. Things were, remember, Jiu-Jitsu was originally taught on a one-to-one -one basis at, uh, back in Brazil. Uh, through private lessons and group classes weren't really a thing until jiu-jitsu started coming to America and then because of the explosion of the UFC in 1993 people started you know the, the a lot of people started wanting to train jiu-jitsu so they started incorporating these group classes now the curriculum was originally designed for private lessons that way the instructor would be able to attack the student in a particular way. That way the techniques were a little bit easier to, to learn and they flowed really well together because the attacker was, you know, the, the, the instructor was attacking the student in a particular way. As the years went on, competition jiu-jitsu became more popular and schools started incorporating uh, competition curriculums um, and teaching competition techniques in order to win tournaments. But during that time, it made it very difficult for people to learn jujitsu and get good fast. Back when I started, it would take, it was very common for students to receive a black belt after 10, 12, even 15 years of training. So it took a long time to develop the skills and to um, get better at jujitsu. So this was my journey. And and even though I received my black belt in five and a half years, I thought that I was a pretty unique case. I was a college wrestler. I had a very good sense of balance and transitions and, and I had a good strength and coordination for grappling because of my wrestling background. And I was able to advance through the belts by winning several tournaments and, and I advanced through the belts rather quickly. So this was my jiu-jitsu journey and, and how I started to learn jiu-jitsu and my jiu-jitsu experience. So let's get started here. So I call this presentation the start of my journey. This is a typical jiu-jitsu student experience back in the, in, the, in the late 90s. And even till today, some people still kind of train the exact same way. The schools are still structured in a very similar way uh, that I'm gonna mention here. So as a new student, you walk into an academy with normal jiu-jitsu curriculum. And the first thing I want to talk about is that there's this randomness to moves and, and, and things I think have gotten a little bit better over time. But in many schools, there's just a randomness to moves. You learn techniques in no particular order. So you, there's not a level of understanding which techniques are more important than others or which techniques work better than others. There's just kind of this random um, disbursement of knowledge. Next, you have to figure out which techniques work best for your style, your body type, your, your size, your strength, your weight, um, your flexibility. So you gotta kind of figure out what techniques work for you and, and, and try to piece those techniques into your game. Now from every position, you start to learn various moves. So then you start to group moves into categories. So all your passes go together, all your submissions kind of go together. And then if you want to get a little bit more specific, you can even put your submissions in particular positions or, or transitions in particular positions together. Next comes figuring out work, what works best for your style. So again, depending on your size, your strength, your speed, your coordination, you are figuring out what to develop in your style. So once you have your techniques evolved and you start becoming good at particular techniques, you start to figure out, okay, what do I develop next? You have to kind of, there's no guiding force in letting you know kind of what you should develop next. You kind of have to figure that out on your own. Most people will develop, the first thing I developed was a guard because I figured, okay, I'm a college wrestler. I can take everyone down. My weakest point is on my back. Let me start developing a guard. So the first year and a half, two years of my training, even more so three years of my training, I really developed uh, my guard off my back, submission sweeps, and most importantly, preventing the guard pass. 
Now, the longer you do jujitsu, you start to realize that you start, you, you are limited in certain positions. So you piece together a complete game. You start developing a good pass. You start developing, developing a good side mount, a good mount, a good back mount. And then you, in the, in the inverse, you start developing good side mount escapes, good mount escapes, good back, back mount escapes. So you start kind of piecing together a complete game. Um, so that's, that's the next step that, that, uh, that I started to, to work on, right? So you start to figure out where the holes are and you start plugging those holes. The next step is to come up with a complete strategy. So again, now we're fighting in a particular way. We are uh, avoiding certain positions. One, because maybe we're not that strong or we're a little bit weak. Or secondly, we're, we're preventing those positions because they are uh, penalized in competition. So for example, side mount bottom, you don't spend a whole lot of time in side mount bottom because if you develop your guard and nobody can pass your guard, that position is kind of ignored. There's kind of your basic shrimp and shoot and explosive movements to escape the side mount, but it's not really developed because it's penalized. So the goal was to prevent the guard pass in order to not end up on side mount bottom rather than embracing the position and learning how to truly be comfortable there and work your way out of there. Now with all these things being said, the last part of this is hope for the best. So you put these pieces together, you do the best that you can. Maybe the instructor gives you a little bit of guidance, but for the most part, this is on, you're on your own with this one and you hope for the best. So you kind of develop bits and pieces of your game. You get them to a point where you feel competent and then you start moving on to different positions until you feel competent and, and you rinse and repeat the process. When it's all said and done, you go out there, you compete, you hope for the best. You hope that what you've done is good enough to get you the victories. So this video was kind of, I wanted you guys to kind of see the mentality of what I experienced. And maybe you, some of you guys out there uh, have experienced something similar and you become frustrated with jujitsu and you end up quitting jujitsu, which is the main reason that I'm putting together this series is to kind of teach everyone that there is a, that there is a different way. I wanted to give you guys the background of what I went through and why I teach the way I teach and why I develop my students the way I do so that my students don't have the burden of figuring everything out on their own. Thank you guys. If you like this video, like and comment. If, you, if you've experienced the same kind of thing, go ahead and leave a, a comment in the, in the comment section. If you have any questions, leave them down there. Like and subscribe and I'll talk to you guys real soon.